I've started to see a lot of people talk about convex.dev online and for good reason. It's an open source reactive database for building applications. To start with, everything is written in TypeScript, which means you get full safety and it can live right alongside your application code. Now it always stays in sync and that's in part because of the way the sync engine works. You can interact with your database with two different functions, query functions, which grab data from your database and mutation functions, which mutate the data within your database. And we'll also talk about actions, which are ways to interact with external services. And you can do all this again using TypeScript. Now it's super fast because it's connected to the database. You have authentication built in. There's these really cool things called components, which we'll talk about as well. I hope you can tell just how excited I am about Convex. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so let's check out Convex. You can see here that it's the backend for AI. I think this is just an attempt to kind of connect to AI because really it's just a great backend and you don't have to be using AI to get the most out of it. So I wanna just jump straight into their tutorial because I feel like that would be the quickest way to kind of show off some of the features and they do a good job explaining some of the stuff in here. So let's kind of walk through this together and I'll talk about what I think makes Convex special. So I'll, I'll go ahead and clone this, get inside that, install all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna get this up and running in a second, but you do have to have the Convex CLI installed. If you don't, you'll have to install that and then it will ask you to authenticate. You can use your GitHub account or I think Google as well, actually, if you want to. Anyhow, and then it will basically create your backend for you in a folder called Convex inside the project and get everything up and running. And uh, it'll open up your local host. It'll also open it up in Convex and you'll be able to see that whole database it's, as well. So let's come inside here and npm run dev. All right, so it's gonna ask for a project name, so I'll give it that. It'll create the new project, it'll spin this up, and because I've already installed this locally and connected my CLI, I won't have to do anything else. If you haven't, you literally just have to open up your web browser, create an account if you haven't yet, sign in, and then you're authenticated. Okay, so here we've got this convex chat app. I can say like, hi or something, and it won't work yet because there's no mutation implemented yet. So it's a time to talk a little bit more about how this whole thing works. So down here, you'll see that you kind of have three pieces to any application. Here, you might have one web user. They obviously would be user A. This is another user, user B. And obviously, you've got the client library on both of their browsers, right? So you're running local client code for them. However, you have to have some kind of back end. This is where Convex comes in. Convex is your database, but it's also your sync engine, and it gives you some tools to connect with that database. Now, it's really fast because it has two ways to interact with the actual data in your database. One is a mutation, that's when you're changing data inside your database, and the other would be a query. A query is when you're getting data out of your database. Now, you'll notice here they live right next to the database, and that makes it crazy fast. So you get live real-time updates you can subscribe to, and anytime you do something in user A, you'll see that that's inside the sync engine, and so you can immediately show that for user A. Now, let me zoom in just a bit here. And this is important. Convex databases are document relational databases. In other words, they're kind of like both relational databases and document databases. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. And from somebody who's come mostly from document-based databases, but have started to see some of the powers of relational databases, it's a really nice onboarding ramp for me in particular. So all documents have an auto-generated ID that can be used to be create relationships between documents. But notice everything is done in TypeScript. So as a JavaScript TypeScript developer, this is really nice. I can interact, I can mutate the data, query the data all using simple TypeScript functions. Again, there are two types, mutations and queries. We'll look at that those more. And there's the sync engine that kind of controls all of that. So first of all, let's get this thing up and running and then we'll add some of this code. So I should probably also open this up. So let me get this up in my code editor. All right, here we go. So you see here, it's created this convex folder. We've got this generated section, which is all the server code that we need. Now let's go ahead and write some TypeScript code, which will allow us to do things like those queries and mutations that we just kind of looked at real briefly. We, what we want to do is be able to write our first mutation. Now you'll remember when we started to do this over here, we said something like hi, and it didn't work, right? Because it says mutation is not yet implemented. So they've got some kind of way to signal that here in the generated code. But if I jump back over this way, you'll see that that's all we're going to do. Why are we using mutation? Well, it's because we're going to change the data within the database. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to create a new file over here. Uh, we'll call this chat.ts since that's what they say to do. And I'll paste this in here. Now let's walk through this real briefly. You'll see here that we've got an actual argument here. We can take in a user in a body. Now you can actually create schemas as well if you want to. In fact, they recommend it. This gives you even more type safety when you're actually calling these functions. But for now, notice that we've got these saying they have to be strings. 
Now, this V is basically a wrapper like Zod, where you're basically checking to see that the, the args you passed in match that. So that's what that's doing. And you'll see that we've got a handler function. This is a TypeScript function that look at this. It's just going to take the context, db.insert messages, and it uses the user and it uses the body. So all this is all it takes to get this up and running. So let's scroll down this way. You'll see that we need to update the actual app to use this as well. Now notice again, we've got a really easy hook on the front end. This is obviously using React where we just use mutation. And then here is that message we saw that was being sent where it said, hey, you haven't uh, implemented this yet, this alert. So we're gonna replace it with our own send message function. Where does that come from? Well, from right here. And we can use the use mutation here by calling this method. And notice how clean this is. We've got api.chat because that's the name of the file, dot send a message. So just really easy to kind of scope to exactly what you need, pull that in. Now you can use the mutation in your front end. So let's come back over this way. Let's go ahead and go into the SRC folder over here. We'll close this down and let me copy some of this over and let's replace this here. I need, I need to go ahead and pull this in. So let's pull this in up top and then we'll also grab the API right here as well while we're at it. And then finally down below, let's go ahead and grab the form and update that on submit handler. I think my biome is going crazy with some of the stuff in here, but it's okay. <laughs> let's come back over this way. And now I should be able to say something like, hi, and it should send that along. Now notice I'm not actually seeing this yet in the application, but if we were to jump over to Convex itself, let me see if I can log in here. There we go. We can jump into the Convex tutorial and we can look at the data. And right here, you see that I've got hi and the user is Kobe. So just like that, we're actually interacting with the database. We're mutating the database with that use mutation uh, hook. Okay, so let's keep going in the tutorial. There are a couple of the things we need to do. And look at that. It even told us to open up the dashboard, which we just did. Okay, as I scroll down here, you'll see here, they say schemas are optional. Eventually you want to enforce the structure of your tables and you don't have to do it right now, but maybe we should go ahead and just jump into this real briefly. You can see that all you have to do is add a schema.ts file and then you write it like this. It's very similar to what we've already seen. You define a schema where you look at the thing. In this case, whatever table it happens to be, we'd look at like messages in this case or users and then we define this and notice it automatically assigns an ID. And the user, we can just link to the ID of the user's table. Now here, we're going to say that the token itself to identify this should be the token identifier. Okay, so let's jump back up top here. Let's see where we go right here. Yeah, this is where I was at. Um, we're gonna open the sidebar, come over here. We'll just add a schema.ts file and paste all this in. Now again, all of these tables here, messages and users are the same ones that we've actually seen over this way. We've got users and messages. All right, cool. So where were we? Back over this way. I want to mention one other thing. And again, this is just kind of the DX on top of Convex that makes me really like it. You can actually generate your schemas yourselves. You don't have to write them manually. If you're starting to write data somewhere, you'll see right here, I can just click this button down here and generate the schema. This is what it's generated for the actual data I currently have. So even if you don't like writing schemas, it kind of does it for you as long as what your, you know, your data is consistent to start with. Start writing to your database, then grab your schema, pop that in, and you're set to go. All right, uh, back to the actual tutorial. Let's scroll down this way. Because so far we've added stuff, but we have yet to actually pull in the chats themselves. So now what we're going to do is we've already used a mutation. We now want to add a query as well. And we're going to add this to the same chat.ts file. Well, the reason we're doing this is because we need to actually query the data we want. Now notice real fast here, we added a schema here. And here we're saying the user has to be the string. Over here, we're saying, no, actually it needs to be connected to the user table. So we'll need to fix that in a second. For now, just to make it a little simpler on ourselves while we're still learning, I'll say string like this. And if I remember, I'll try to come back to that. Okay, so back to the chat app over here. Let's now add one more function. This is gonna be a get messages where we query the data. Again, the query comes from the same section of underscore generated server. So query gets stuff out of the database, mutations add things or mutate the data in the database. Notice we're going to get the last 50 messages, then we're going to reverse them. So return them in reverse order. Okay, down this way, we just need to update the app because now we need to pull in that data. So messages right now, if I were to look at this, they're just a hard coded array, right? So we want to replace that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come inside here. We'll just replace all our messages with the use query. And I should be able to grab this from convex react. Now this one little line use query does all this work for you. It tells the convex client library, that's the one on the device, to subscribe to get messages function. So every single time that get messages, which is this function over here, right here, is updated with new data, it actually grabs this and updates our client-side app. So super cool to see work. Let's actually uh, do this. So let's pull this open over here. 
I'll look at that. Our high messages are already here. We'll say hi again or whatever. And the cool thing is we can open another app. Actually, let's just copy this over like this. And let me pull this side by side. And we can say like, uh, yo. And I can say, uh, I am writing to myself. <laughs> so you can see how quick and easy that is. Just write back and forth. And it kind of auto selects names for us to start with just to make the tutorial a little easier. Now, if we keep going to the tutorial, that's basically done, but there are extra things you can do. But there's one more piece of the puzzle that really makes Convex interesting because right now, these mutations and these queries can only interact with the database. They can do no external API calls or anything like that. So if you want to do that, you have to use one more thing called an action. So if you jump into the next little section here, they'll talk you through how to do that. But you'll see that these actions here interact with other items like the Wikipedia API, or in this case, just a fetch to the Wikipedia uh, website. So these three pieces together, the query, the mutation, and the action really allow you to not just interact with your database and sync all that data real time, but also make external API calls. Now, we've seen a lot of the power of Convex. I'm not going to walk through this section of the tutorial because at some point I'm just doing the tutorial in front of you, but I do want to talk through it briefly and then jump into one other thing, which is Convex components. So see over here, we've got these internal actions where again, we've got args we can pass in and a handler that in this case doesn't have to just interact with our database. It can actually make external API calls. And that's how all these things work together really powerfully. So let me make this bigger. You'll see now that what we're going to do is uh, update the send message mutation function. Here, if the message starts with wiki, then we get the string after the first space. So the idea is you can do like forward slash wiki space, whatever you want to talk about. Now notice it's going to use something else we haven't talked about, which is this scheduler. There's a built-in scheduler that can do tasks for you. And in this case, it's saying run as soon as you can. And here's what I want you to run, that internal action that we created. I don't have to worry about any of the details there. In fact, right down here, they'll talk you through that. Convex comes with a powerful durable function scheduler. It's a fundamental part of the sync engine. And it basically allows you to coordinate asynchronous functions. Now, you don't have to worry about race conditions or all the other kinds of things that a lot of times you have to worry about. It handles all of that for you. Now, since we're inside of a mutation or if we were inside of a query, it's the only way to actually interact with actions. So, but you can also just use it in other places as well. So this internal action can be called when it's available. So this is really cool, but the internal action will reach out to Wikipedia, grab all the stuff it needs, then it will actually post its own chat and respond with whatever the summary is from Wikipedia. Now, all this is handled by the scheduler. And one thing we haven't talked about is that these entire mutations, all these mutations are transactions, which means they totally fail or totally succeed. That's another way in which it protects you against these race conditions and a lot of the things you can struggle with when you're building a real-time chat application or anytime you're interacting with the database. Okay, so as promised, you've got authentication. Here, you've got a bunch of options, including their own convex auth, which is in beta, but I've used it. It seems really solid so far. Uh, file storage. All right, finally here, I promised I'd talk about components. These components are really cool. They're like packaged up code. So they're little apps that they've created for you that are sandboxed environments with their own database, their own sync engine, all that kind of stuff. And they do a lot of extra stuff that you wouldn't typically build out yourself, but they've kind of taken the load off of you for a lot of these kinds of things. So if I come inside here, you can see that you could do a ton of stuff. So you've got an AI agent that they've kind of built out this own little app. You can just plug into your app whenever you want. They've got cron jobs, they've got workflows, they've got a bunch of other things. I actually interacted with this whole app, first of all, because of Recent, which is the company I work for. And the cool thing here is they've developed like their own little email component that can queue and batch and handle all this stuff itself using item potency, which means stuff will only happen once. Rate limiting, all this kind of stuff, it handles for you. You literally just plug it in, give it your API key, and it kind of handles all that, actually sets up a webhook for you. So normally a lot of that kind of stuff would take a while to include in your application. The convex component makes that super easy. Again, there are a bunch of different options. You can jump into the integrations and really see like Cloudflare R2 or Polar for billing. If you have feature flags or Twilio, like all this is just built in by default. You can just plug in this component and it handles all the logic for you. Again, it's a sandbox environment where they've done all the development for you so that you can just plug it in and use as you want. I hope you really enjoyed that overview of how Convex works at a high level. And hopefully you see why I'm so bullish on this. I think it's just such a natural fit for both people used to relational databases and those of us used to document bit databases. It's open source, it's sync engine is crazy fast, it's super powerful, and the DX is just kind of out of this world. Well, let me know what you'd like me to build next because I'm playing with this all the time these days and I'd love to hear your ideas. Thanks so much, I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.